welcome back in this video we are going to talk about how to test kafka or rabbitmq based event driven workflows using test containers and availability libraries let's imagine we are building an application where we are consuming messages from kafka or rabbitmq and process them according to your business requirements and finally you are going to persist some data into some kind of a database like postgres or any other type of database so in this use case what i want to test is if i send a message to uh, kafka and my product event listener should consume that event process it uh, according to my requirements and then finally save the data into our uh, database postgres and then during this test finally i want to ensure that whatever the data that i am expecting in the database it is there that is the use case so in order to do that, we can leverage test containers library for spinning up either Kafka or RabbitMQ. And then you can publish a message to those systems and your application should consume that message and then process it. Finally, the interesting part is while asserting whether the data is there in uh, database or not, you cannot do that immediately after sending the message to Kafka or RabbitMQ because your workflow is kind of an event driven and there is no guarantee that once you send a message it is going to be immediately processed and immediately uh, the data is available in the database. So in order to handle this asynchronous uh, workflow testing we are going to leverage this library called Avitality. So the use case is uh, exactly what we are talking about here. Like we are going to send a message to one of the uh, message systems like uh, RabbitMQ or Kafka and we are going to use this availability uh, library methods like here we can wait at most five seconds and then we can say what we are uh, trying to verify like in this method we may be checking in the database whether some data record is available or not so it is going to try uh, up to five seconds and as long as it is not fulfilled it is going to retry and then after five seconds if still this is not true it is going to fail otherwise it's going to keep doing this check and if it is succeeded it's going to pass the test so this is exactly what we want uh, for testing these kind of uh, asynchronous uh, use cases so here i have a spring boot kafka test containers demo application and let us go to uh, palm.xml and see what we have in here so here we are using availability 4.2.0 version and test containers 1.7.6 version which are the latest as of uh, this recording and we have started data jpa and we have spring kafka and we are using postgresql and then uh, from test containers we are using kafka module and postgres uh, module and we have availability so these are the dependencies we have and let us go through the source code of the application so here we have a jpa entity called product with few properties like a code name and price and then we have product repository which is nothing but a spring data jpa repository with a couple of custom methods here one is update product price which is nothing but simply updating the price of a given product code and uh, finding a product by code so these are the two custom methods we have and there is product service which is nothing but having one update product price which simply delegates to a repository nothing much and then here we have product price changed event POSO which contains product code and price so imagine some other application is going to uh, make the change to the product price and then they are going to publish an event containing these two properties to Kafka and our application is supposed to consume that event and update the price in our system in postgres database so that is the use case so here we have product price changed event handler which is nothing but uh, we are using spring kafka integration using this at kafka listener and we are specifying we are going to listen to this topic product price changes uh, topic and here spring integration is going to take care of uh, taking the incoming message payload and converting it into product price changed event uh, poso and then simply calling this product service to update the price 
okay so if our application is working fine whenever a message to kafka uh, is sent uh, with this product price change event payload it is it should be consuming and properly update uh, our product price in our postgres database that is the expectation so here let us go to uh, this application dot properties where we have the configuration so here uh, ideally if you are running our application we should configure where is the kafka uh, running so if you are running on local host um, you should point to your local host 9092 which is the default port for kafka and also while sending a message uh, we are uh, saying the key is of type string and value is of type let's say this product price change event but we need to say we need to configure how do we want to serialize and deserialize these key and values so as uh, we are using key as a string uh, we are using string deserializer whereas the value is of type this product price change event we want to uh, serialize and deserialize using json so that is how we configured for both uh, key serializer uh, value serializer key deserializer and value deserializer so <coughs> we are going to use json deserializer uh, for the actual payload okay so this is the configuration we have for spring kafka integration now let us take a look at how we can write a test for this use case so there are many things going on here so let us uh, look at uh, this test step by step first thing is we are using this at spring boot test which is kind of an integration test which loads all the components but for testing this use case where uh, we are going to send a message to Kafka and our listener is supposed to listen to that event and then it should persist the price change into our Postgres database. In order to test that whole scenario, we need a two infrastructure components. One is Kafka, another one is Postgres database. So like I uh, explained in the previous videos, we can use different approaches to spin up the required uh, infrastructure components using test containers. Here we are going to use test containers JUnit 5 extension and define this Kafka container and added this add container annotation. So what does it do? It is going to spin up this Kafka container when we start running this test. Okay. And here we are going to register the uh, Spring Kafka bootstrap servers by fetching the bootstrap uh, server URL dynamically from this Kafka container. Okay. So this is how we are configuring Kafka for our test. But we also need a database. So similar to this, we could also configure another uh, Postgres container and register database properties using registry.add spring data source URL, etc. But there is a simpler way where we can use this property source using uh, test containers special JDBC URL. So here by configuring this, it will automatically spin up a PostgreSQL uh, container using uh, this uh, container uh, version and it's going to spin up this uh, run this schema also to initialize the database okay and uh, it will automatically configure uh, spring data source url and uh, uh, username and password things like that okay so it is kind of a simplified configuration but if you prefer to do it uh, this way it is also fine using add container and define your container and register a spring data source properties okay so once we have these containers running we also uh, auto add this kafka template so spring and kafka integration will auto configure this kafka template okay and we have product repository and before running our test uh, we are trying to create a product with uh, code p100 and product price is 10 and then we are saving it into our database okay so uh, we can sh make sure that this product is already there in the database now coming to the actual test here so what we are doing we are creating a product price change event also and we are giving the same product code and then we are changing the price to 1450 okay and here we are uh, sending the message to the same uh, topic that our listener is uh, listening on to uh, through kafka template and the key is nothing but product code 
and value is this payload okay so spring integration now uh, spring and kafka integration now takes care of taking this pozo and converting it into json and then send the message to this topic okay and if our application is working fine our event listener should uh, listen this message and consume this message and update the data so what we are doing once we send the message to kafka we are using this availability library to uh, make sure the product is updated so how we are doing it here is we are using at most 10 seconds that means we are going to retry this verification at most for 10 seconds and if whatever the assertion we have written is not uh, succeeded within the 10 seconds our test is going to fail okay so until asserted we can provide uh, whatever the assertions you want to uh, do so here what we are doing we are trying to fetch a product from the repository using this code and then we are asserting the code is p100 and the value should be whatever the new value we are expecting which is 1450 okay so this is how we are asserting uh, whether the me uh, message is consumed properly and then uh, pers persisted the product price into the database or not also here if you take a look at poll interval so if you don't uh, specify poll interval it's going to take whatever the default is and then keep trying for running this lambda but if you want to specify some poll interval because it is not necessary to keep trying immediately so you want to take a interval of three seconds so this is how you can do that so basically what it is going to do for every uh, three second interval it's going to run this uh, lambda again to check if all the assets are true it's going to say oh, the test is true otherwise it's going to uh, retry to maximum of 10 seconds and then if still the assets are uh, not true it's going to fail the test so this is how this availability library is very useful for uh, testing all this asynchronous uh, processing okay now let us run the test and see so here we can see it is spinning of kafka container and then it's going to spin up postgresql container and it sent the message and the we can see in the uh, sql logs that it updated the price so here we can see it updated the price and test is successful okay so this is how we can um, we can use test containers and availability uh, libraries for uh, testing this asynchronous message uh, driven event processing okay now let us see how we can test similar message driven workflows this time using rabbitmq so here we have a spring boot rabbitmq test containers demo application and uh, let us take a quick look at what we have in our palm.xml so we are going to use same uh, test containers and availability and we have uh, spring boot starter amqp which is nothing but support for rabbitmq integration with spring boot and we have spring boot starter data jpa and we are going to use postgresql and we have included a test containers postgresql and a rabbitmq uh, module support and we are going to use availability so let us take a look at uh, what is the production code we have so most of the code is very similar to the previous uh, sample application we have a product jpa entity we have spring data jpa repository for product and we have same product service now uh, we are using uh, rabbitmq and if you are familiar with uh, earlier traditional messaging systems it used to be like there is a queue and a uh, some other systems can publish messages directly to the queue and some other systems can consume those messages from the queue and process it but with rabbitmq there is an indirection where there is an exchange and people can send messages to that exchange with a specific routing key and based on that routing key rabbitmq is going to forward that message to various queues so here we are defining one uh, topic exchange uh, with the name products exchange and we are creating a, a queue for product pricing and then we are binding that um, exchange with the queue using this uh, routing key 
So these are uh, these are the configurations that we need for our uh, RabbitMQ. In addition to that, uh, we are going to customize RabbitMQ uh, Rabbit template because we want to serialize and deserialize the payloads using Jackson JSON library. So th this is the configuration we have. Okay. So with this, we have RabbitMQ configuration uh, working fine. And then finally, we have a product price change event listener. And it is kind of a very similar to how we have uh, for Kafka, except that we are going to use a rabbit listener annotation and specify what is the queue we want to listen. So if somebody sends a message to um, this exchange, products exchange with this uh, routing key, it is going to be forwarded to this queue. And we have this listener which is going to listen uh, for messages in this queue and uh, continue to process that event. In our case, it's it should update the price uh, for the specific product code. Okay, so this is all the configuration we need. We don't have any uh, additional configuration in our properties file. Now let us take a look at how we should write a test. Again, most of the um, configuration is very similar to the previous example. We are spinning up a Postgres container uh, with this a special a test containers JDBC URL support and then we are spinning up a RabbitMQ container and then using this dynamic property source we are configuring where is the uh, RabbitMQ host and port username and password from this RabbitMQ container. Okay. Now uh, we have injected a Rabbit a template and then we have set up a product uh, that is stored in our Postgres database. Now finally coming to the test again we created a product price change event and then we are publishing an event to uh, this exchange using the routing key and the payload is nothing but this uh, POSO. So Spring Boot is going to take care of converting this payload into JSON and then send to this uh, exchange with this routing queue, a routing key. So it is going to be automatically forward to that uh, queue. So finally, uh, we are following the same pattern uh, by using a vitality. We are waiting at most 10 seconds and keep trying uh, to run these assertions. And if they are successful, the test is going to be successful. Otherwise, even after uh, 10 seconds, if any of these assets are failed, the test is going to be failed. So now let us run this test. So here it is going to spin up um, database and RabbitMQ and execute the test. So here we can see it is spinning up this RabbitMQ and then it is spinning up this PostgreSQL and finally executed the test and it is passing. Okay, cool. Nowadays, most of the applications work by interacting with other systems, either using uh, REST APIs or using message uh, brokers. So in this video, we have learned how we can test all these event-driven workflows using Kafka or RabbitMQ and consume those messages and process them. So by using these test containers, we can um, use the actual uh, infra components like Kafka, RabbitMQ and send messages and then verify the behavior uh, without having to uh, rely upon mocks. Okay, so uh, also this availability library is really handy when it comes to testing these asynchronous workflows. So I hope uh, this video is helpful for understanding how you can test with this uh, asynchronous messaging workflows uh, using test containers and availability. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for the upcoming videos. Bye-bye.